Hello students and welcome back to our class. In today's video, we will start our discussion of Chapter 2, Techniques in Professional Development, Stage 1. So in this chapter, it will be divided into two lessons. And for this video, we'll focus on Lesson 1. Lesson 1 is about communication, process, types, and barriers. Siyempre, you know the drill. Bago tayo magsimula ng ating discussion, lesson objectives muna tayo. So after this lesson, students are expected to prepare and deliver effective oral communications to individuals and to groups, plan and organize type and content of communication according to purpose and intend intended audience or receiver, Convey ideas clearly, ensuring effective communication in multicultural workforce and external audience. Identify strategies for establishing and maintaining communication links with internal and external audiences. And lastly, demonstrate effective listening skills. Our lesson will be divided into four parts. First is our communication process. We will talk about the communication process. Ano ba yung involved in the process of communication? Second, we will compare formal and informal communication. Third, are different types of communication. And lastly, different communication barriers. So, let's start with our communication process. Ano ba yung involved in the communication process? Paano nagsisimula? Ano yung mga dapat nating i-consider? Una, syempre, let's identify what communication is. Okay? Communication is a two-way process wherein the information, ideas, opinions, thoughts, feelings, etc. are transmitted between the individuals through the use of mutually understood symbols and semiotic rules or signs and symbols. It involves several components such as the sender of the communication, the actual message being sent, the encoding of the message, the receiver, and the decoding of the message. So, ano ba yung communication process? Communication process is a series of actions or steps taken para maging successful yung communication natin. Paano natin masabing successful ang communication? Pag nakarating yung message ng sender dun sa receiver, then we can say, you were able to successfully communicate. Kasi naparating natin yung message na gusto natin iparating. Ano yung goal ng communication process? Ang goal ng communication process is to present an individual or party with information at syempre dapat maintindihan nila yun. Sino yung tinutukoy nating individual or party dito? Ang tinutukoy nating individual or party is yung receiver. Yung tao o grupo na tatanggap ng information mula sa ating sender. Sa nagsasabi, nagsasalita, or nagbibigay ng information. At ang role ng sender is to choose the most appropriate medium para maging successful yung communication process. Ano-ano yung involved sa communication process? We have seven major elements of communication process. Iisa-isahin natin sila. Una, we have our sender. The send, after ng sender, meron kang encoding. After that, you have your message and your channel of communication. After noon, meron ka ng decoding. Pag natapos yung decoding, you have your receiver and lastly, you have your feedback. 
Pagkatapos ng feedback, babalik uli siya. And then, it can be an interaction. Sender. Sino sa sender? Di ba? Parang pag nag-text ka, di ba? Message sent. May, may pinadala ka, may sinabi ka. So, ang sender is the person delivering a message to a recipient. Meron kang pinadalang mensahe at merong tatanggap nun. Sa institutional communication, an individual may send the message on behalf of the institution. So, if you will be working in a company, pwedeng you will represent the company and you will uh, deliver the message for the company. Next, in the process is encoding. Ano yung encoding? Sa so encoding, gumagamit tayo ng words or non-verbal methods such as symbols, signs, and body gestures para matranslate natin yung information into message. It is the process in which the message is translated from an idea or thought into transmittable symbols. Ano ibig sabihin? Siyempre, bago naman tayo magsalita or bago tayo mag-convey ng message, magbigay ng information, iniisip muna natin yun. Hopefully, iniisip talaga muna natin, no? Bago tayo mag-convey ng message. Okay? Ngayon, ang, par ang target ng encoding or yung role ng encoding is to translate yung ideas natin and yung thoughts natin into symbols or gestures na pwedeng tanggapin ng receiver. The symbols could be words, pictures, numbers, gestures, movements, or sound. The message should be encoded in symbols in such a way that the source and the receiver attach the same meaning. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Dapat nagkakaunawan kayo. Pag sinabi mo bang selfie, Naintindihan ka ba ng lola mo kung ano yung tinutukoy mong selfie? May mga words na magkakaiba ang meaning, lalo na pag binasa mo lang. Ano yung halimbawa? Halimbawa, A, W, A, Y. Pag binasa mo siya in English, ibig sabihin, away or malayo. On the other hand, pag binasa mo siya in Tagalog, or Filipino, away. So, ngayon, magkaiba yung meaning pagka translate mo. Ano yung meron doon? Dapat, ensure mo na yung messenger or yung sender at yung receiver, pareho sila. Para yung in-encode ng receiver or yung in-encode ng sender, sorry, yung in-encode ng sender, yun din yung i-decode ng receiver. Next, we have is message. Message is the information that the sender is relaying to the receiver. Ano ba yung gusto mong sabihin? Ano ba yung information na gusto mong ibigay? Information, pwedeng opinion, feelings, okay? Feelings na hindi natin masabi pero gusto nating ipaalam. Instructions, pwede rin. Request or suggestions, Okay? Halimbawa, ano yung message na gusto mong iparating? Halimbawa, dito sa example natin, gusto natin sabihin, congratulations on your new job or your promotion. O kaya naman, information na gusto natin i-share sa klase natin. Ano kaya ang information ang gusto mong i-share sa klase? Sagot sa quiz. Or ano yung tanong sa quiz? Ah, diba? So, yung yun yung message. Ano yung gusto natin sabihin? Ano yung gusto nating ipaalam? After that, meron tayong channels. Different channels. Hindi channels lang sa TV ha. Yung channels are transmission or method of delivering the message. Paano mo gustong ipadala yung message? Pwedeng through words. Okay? Gusto mo siyang sabihin. Pwede rin through image. Magpapadala ka ng picture. Oh, diba? Nagpadala ka ng picture kay Jowa, 
ng selfie mo because namimiss mo siya. Yung mga ganon. O kaya pwede rin sounds. Nag-record ka ng music by the language, di ba? Yung tipong pagkadating pa lang nung kaibigan mo. Kasi gusto mo sabihin may bago kang chika. Di ba? Or uh, things like that. So it can be verbal, non-verbal, written, and digital channels. After that, meron ka ng decoding. Ano yung pinagkaiba ng encoding and decoding? Yung encoding, ang gumagawa nito yung sender. Okay? So, yung nagde-decide paano niya i-convey yung thoughts niya, paano niya sasabihin yung information niya, paano niya i-relay yung information niya, papunta sa receiver. Ngayon, ano naman yung decoding? Yung decoding, ginagawa to ng receiver. And that's the interpretation of the message. Paano i-interpret yung sinabi, ginawa, or pinakita ng sender? And then we have the receiver. Receiver is the person from the name itself who receives the message or for whom the message is meant for. We have to be careful kasi syempre may mga instances din na sabay-sabay na nagsasalita. So yung receiver, mahirapan siyang i-decode yung message. Kasi nga, sa pag nagsabay-sabay, So, syempre, in an ideal world, isa lang yung i-encode niya, or isa lang yung i-decode niya na message. After that, meron kang feedback. So, hindi ito laging nangyayari. Hindi lahat ng communication process ay may feedback. In some instances, the receiver might have feedback or a response response. To the sender. Sabi mo kay friend mo, T, yung sagot sa number 1, B. Tapos sabihin sa'yo nung pinagsabihan mo, thank you, ganyan. Okay? Salamat, B, ganyan. Okay? O kaya naman, sabi nung anak, nanay, first honor po ako. Sabihin nung nanay, good job! Very good, anak. So, pag nagkaroon ng feedback, dito nagsisimula yung interaction. Okay? Kasi, nagpapalitan na sila ng information. Balikan natin. Ano yung seven major elements of communication process? Una, sender, encoding, message, channel of communication, decoding, receiver, and then we have our feedback. In our next video, kasi masyadong mahaba, in our next video, we will discuss or differentiate formal and informal communication. So, yun yung magiging topic natin in our next video. That's the end of our discussion. If you have questions, you can send me an email at arcelia.slaraterese at gmail.com. You may also send me a private message at Facebook or you can comment down below. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Bye class!